on, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, back again with another video. Today, we're going to get into the Cupcake Dauntless Manifesto album review. Yes, finally got it done. Uh, these take me a while, man. I go through each song, and I I go through each song, and I grade each category, and I give it a rate. Like, they're pretty in-depth. So, the way I'm going to grade this album is off of songwriting, lyrics, production, originality, and creativeness, and replay value. Those are the five categories that I'm going to grade every song get a point for each section, average it out, and that'll be the rating for the song. So with songwriting, that's going to be how well does the song flow and how is it arranged, transitions, stuff like that. Lyrics are going to be how deep are the lyrics, how complex are the lyrics, how well does it tie into the theme of the song, and how are they performed? What's the delivery like? Production is going to be the beat and the audio engineering. How is the, everything mixed? How are the sounds? How are the levels? How is the panning? How is the reverb, the effects, the vocals, all that stuff? The originality and creativeness, this one's kind of a hard thing to grade because it is, I mean, a lot of this is subjective with the exception of like the audio engineering, and even that has a subjectiveness to it. But the main thing is like, is this original for this artist? Is this original in general for music? Is this like something I've never heard before? How creative is it in that sense? And how much of inside the box is it for the artist? Like, are they stepping outside of their comfort zone? Are they outside of their box that they normally do? Things like that. That's kind of how I grade it. And then lastly is replay value. How catchy is it? How well did it hook me? Or how impactful was it, right? Because I think that ultimately determines how much and why you're going to replay a song. Like, how catchy was it? Like, dude, I just love it it's so much. I got to play it back over and over. Or like, dude, it really speaks to me. Like it may not be the catchiest, but dude, it just something about it I really relate to, right? I think those are two things that main, mainly people replace stuff for. So the first one obviously is going to be Grilling Homies. The, the songwriting on this one I think is pretty smooth. It starts off with the beat kind of building before she gets into it. It kind of creates a little bit of this tone, this energy, and then adds a little bit as she comes in. So it's kind of building in that sense, and I think it's pretty smooth. Overall, there's not a whole lot to this song as far as like verse, chorus, bridge, stuff like that, because it's more of like this freestyle display of lyrical rap skill. And so it is a little bit simpler by nature because of that. But I do like how it slows down and picks up and takes drums out and puts drums back in at certain parts to kind of help pick up and drop the energy of the song for Cupcake. So overall, I'm going to give this one a solid 7 out of 10. The lyrics, I think she's definitely talking her shit on this one. She definitely went in. She was in her bag with her pen on this one because there's a lot of bars, right? I like the, I ain't claiming no X's, but I still calling shit Twitter. And that's not that complex, but the delivery on it was really good. I really like the flyer than an op soul rest in pizzy because that's obviously a double that's a really disrespectful bar. Like she's flyer than her op soul, meaning she killed her ops and they're flying up. And there goes the soul, but she's also super fly. She's higher than than that with the fly level because she has that much drip so i like that bar and then i think my favorite bar of the song was since i carry a chopper every day you can call me mariah because i carry every christmas with ease that was a bar because the mariah carey she's super known for like obviously she's a huge singer but she's really known for the christmas stuff that she does and her last name's carrie so she carries every christmas with ease kind of doesn't really tie into the song but the way she said it and the setup for it and the delivery on it was just very nice. Really like that bar. And then the other one was, if I'm just being honest, pinky ring made homies promise. Got so many rings. Looks like an episode of Sonic or something like that. That one was another hard bar. And overall, she had a lot of bars. The delivery was crazy. The flow was crazy. She had a lot of switch ups. She had entendres in here. She had some depth to the lyrics and complexity to the lyrics. She had great wordplay. She had great punches. I mean, the writing on here and her lyrics and delivery and everything was spectacular. I think as far as the lyrics, 10 out of 10. The production on here is like this fast, dark piano trap style. I think that combines with her lyrics and the way she delivered really well. I think she had a really great relationship with her vocals and the, the style of beat that it is. I think the mix on here is really good. The ad-libs, the layers of her vocals, everything's at the right volume. Everything's at the right balance. And there's there's a really good relationship between her and the beat. I feel like they really are one. Like they were meant for each other on this one. You know what I mean? So the production is going to get a 10 out of 10 as well. Now, as far as the originality and creativeness... This isn't anything like new. You're flexing on your ops. You're flexing on your haters. You're talking shit. You're you're hyping yourself up. I get it. I've heard it. But it is a little bit more on her style with her flow and the way that she delivers a lot of these lyrics. So there is that originality for her kind of style with this. And it is a little bit different than, you know, the sexual kind of stuff that I usually get with Cupcake. But overall, it's not anything new. And like, oh my God, I've never heard her do this. I just, I, I just really like the way she snaps. So 
when you take that in consideration, I think she does do it very well, this style of song. But it, I mean, it's nothing new, you know. So I'm going to give the creative and originality part a 7 out of 10. Now, the replay value here, I think the energy is high. I think the pace is high. I think the bars and like the lyrical ability is fun and a good display of her penmanship and the delivery is really good. I think the value is high, even though I don't think I would replay it that much because it is more of like a freestyle. If she gets brought up in a conversation, I'm definitely going to be using this song as like a, hey, you... You want to hear her spit? I'm going to be playing this one. I do hear the value in it, and it does check off a lot of boxes. So for the replay value, I might give it an 8 out of 10. When I add all the ratings up for all these categories, overall, Grillin' Homies 2 is going to get an 8.4. All right, now we're on to Connect 4. Now, Connect 4 has really good fluidity for the songwriting. The songwriting is very smooth. There's a nice buildup with the pre-chorus, and it kind of introduces more sounds as it gets into the chorus. And then that follows suit with her coming in with the vocals, and she's spitting the chorus. And then there's a final verse, and then an outro. So I think I think this flows pretty well start to finish. And it's definitely a little bit more on the traditional side of arrangement, which there's nothing wrong with that, but it is a little bit more basic in that sense. Uh, the only thing I feel like is the intro and the outro here feel like a little bit too dramatic for a song about a threesome. A freaky threesome, nonetheless. But overall, I mean, it's a solid arrangement song so i'm gonna give it an eight out of ten the lyrics here obviously the lyrics are a little bit more raunchy very explicit and descriptive this is where cupcake really kind of thrives a lot of times this is her mo and the the the, the the theme of the song is, you know, a freaky threesome with her and her friend. And so it's not this crazy theme. And she does manage to kind of stay on topic for the most part. And even though that's what the song is about, she still has some bars in there. There's a couple of bars in there. Like one of them is 69, how we go toe to toe. Obviously 69, you're in that position toe to toe. But then also that's how we go toe to toe. Like you want to, you know, tit for tat kind of versus each other things. So a little double there, kind of smooth. And then the I'm with a baddie. She calling you daddy. This ain't your child. You best take her to school. Obviously the other girl's calling her daddy. And it's like, yo, this ain't your child. Take her to school, take her to school, like putting in work, little double entendre there playing with the theme, the freakiness. I get it pretty solid. Um, and then the, the ad libs in here and the way, and the way that she delivers the lyrics and the ad libs on here, I think add a lot to the, the experience of the song in this freaky threesome. And honestly, some these ad libs in here are some of the craziest ad libs in the project as well. Like this one and a few other ones that I'll get to the ad libs in here, are like nothing I've heard before. Right? Like, this is where I start to get introduced to some crazy ad libs with Cupcake on this project. The only thing is, I think the delivery, while it is good, I think it is too aggressive for how the song sounds. And so there's a little bit of a contradiction there for me. So taking in all that in consideration, I'm going to give the lyrics a 7 out of 10. The production quality on here is really high. I think they used a real piano. I do like the piano in here. I think the vocal chops that they did added a lot, added a lot of a specific kind of sound and really added, added a certain vibe to it and an identity to it. Those vocal chops are huge, I think. Uh, I enjoy the sh I enjoy the strings on here as well. Like there's kind of a lot of there's kind of a lot of real sounding instruments going on in here that I like as a whole. They kind of add to the realness of the song. And I feel like everything is pretty balanced here. Everything's pretty clear for the most part. I think there are a couple of parts where the vocals stand out a little bit too much. They're a little overwhelming, especially uh, to the relation of the beat and the drums. But overall, it's a cool beat. I do like the sound selection for sure. I just feel like the, those parts with the beat and the, the vocals could have been done a little bit better. So 8 out of 10 for this one. The originality and creativeness, obviously the idea of it to have this song basically be a Connect Four themed play on words with a threesome and how she ties it all in together is very creative and original. But for her, it's not too far outside her box in the realm. Like this is kind of what she does. But the way that she does it and has almost a traditional structured song, start to finish, intro, chorus, verse, outro, like the way that she does everything with this style of song and the lyrics is pretty creative and original in that sense. So I think everything in here adds to the theme, the ad libs, the friend's voice in the conversation, you know, that she does, that that voice that she plays. And obviously the storytelling kind of going hand in hand, I think. All that adds to the creativeness, so I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 on that part. Now, the replay value for me on this one is going to be a lot lower for sure. I think even for the, the regular Cupcake fan or the avid Cupcake listener, this one's probably going to be a little bit of a lower replay value as well. And I think a lot of other songs would outplay this one by a pretty big margin because for the most part, it's definitely not as catchy as some of the other tracks, but also the aggressive vocals on, on this melodic, calm kind of beat, I think is going to create more of a niche sound for the listener and create more of like a minority group of people that like this versus a wider appeal. And even though I like the beat itself and I like aspects of her lyrics in terms of the storytelling, the contrast really isn't working for me. So for the replay value, I'm going to give it a six out of 10. So when I add everything up for connect four, we get a solid 7.6. Let's get on to the next one. 
Okay, Water Balloon, track number three. Now this one, this one's quite the song, all right? As far as the songwriting goes, I think the song starts out really strong. There's a lot of layers, there's a lot of melody, there's a lot of drums, and the vocals come in all kind of at the same time and get the song going really quick. I think there's a lot of smooth continuity to the song and the way that it flows. The transitions on it are good from the pre-chorus to the chorus, and it has a great outro that matches the overall energy of the song. The way that it kind of concludes is really smooth as well. The only thing in here that kind of threw me off was the chorus to verse two was kind of empty and, and abrupt, but the softer singing vocals kind of tied it back in a little bit. That kind of helped it. So it patched it up a bit, but because of that, I just had to dock a point. Other than that, it was really solid. And the songwriting, actually, I'm going to give a nine out of 10. The lyrics on here, they're a little bit more shallow and a little bit more repetitive especially coming from the last song that we just did, Connect Four. There's not a whole jump in difference between what we're getting in, in lyrical matter, subject matter. But she did manage to squeeze in some bars on this one uh, yet again. Uh, one that I missed initially when I heard the song, I, I didn't catch all of it, was the he should kill this pussy, balls deep O'Neal, like Shaquille O'Neal. I didn't I didn't hear the way that she said Shaquille should kill. Like I really like the way she said that and, and the way she did play on words with that. I missed it the first time, but after, you know, after reviewing it and doing this, I caught that. I thought that was pretty hard. The one power puff on that dick at a blossom. Obviously, that's not too complex or crazy, but the way she set it into the beat and the delivery on it was fire. I really like that. I mean, and you know, it's a bar. It is a bar. It's solid. It's nothing crazy, but it's solid. And then another one is a bar that's actually in the chorus is you better lift that ass up like they canceled your Uber truck. Obviously, lift, lift that ass, lift Uber. Nothing crazy again, but it's a solid little bar and it's in the chorus. So that gets points for me because... It's rare that artists have bars in the chorus, right? Choruses usually are dumbed down to really make the listener get hooked. That's why it's called a hook in the chorus. And the fact that she was able to make it kind of catchy but also have a bar in there, big points. I see her pen. I respect it. Uh, the rest of the song is toned down slightly from what we've been getting for for the most part. But the energy is really solid and the delivery is really good. I think she matched the song of and the beat and the vibe really well. And overall, I think the lyrics, I'd give a 7 out of 10. The production on this one was actually pretty interesting. There was a nice combination of like this pop, acoustic pop, guitar and rap combination. I love the guitar because it's a different style than what we've been getting, you know, for the whole album. It definitely has a, a more unique sound and it, it kind of doesn't want to pick a genre, you know. And I think her rapping on it kind of helps keep it a little bit more rap, but the actual instrumental is a little bit more pop, if that makes sense. Like, uh, it's a very cool combination, I think. The mix on here, though, is really good. It's very balanced. I think the vocals are at a good volume. I think everything's blended in really well. I love the layers and ad-libs on here. I think that's also blended in and mixed really well. Like, when you kind of pay attention, you can hear kind of everything that's going on. You can pick out what you want. Uh, and everything in here is just clear and at the right volume and really balanced mix. I think it's a 10 out of 10 uh, on the production. Now, originality and creativeness, I think the song is lacking a little bit, especially because we just came from Connect Four. So, you know, it's right after Connect Four. It's back-to-back -back sexual experiences and descriptions, and it's nothing new. And she's also touching on similar fantasies and experiences, again, like getting peed on back-to-back. -back. And it is it is a little bit more shallow overall. So with, with that being said, though, I will give her points on the combination of her vocals and the lyrics to fit this style of production. It is a little different, and I think she did a great job job at making kind of this pop style record with these crazy lyrics so on the originality and creative aspect i'm going to give her a six out of ten now the replay value here even though i personally won't be playing this song back okay i actually think that it is really catchy and it flows very well i think she did a good job at matching the energy and writing the beat very well i think the energy of this song is like it's a vibe it's got a little bit of energy but it's also chill at the same time you know, especially with the chorus, I think the chorus does turn up a little bit and, and changes in pace, I think. And for me, that is the only time that I think I could vibe to this song is during the chorus and if it was at the concert. I bet the concert, the chorus definitely is a vibe. It just has that kind of concert energy. Uh, but overall, the song is not really for me. But even with all that being said, I think it still is probably going to be a fan favorite just based on the way that it is. It's catchy. It's solid. It's got the energy. It's got the cupcake aura kind of thing going on. So overall solid. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. So now when I add all these points up for this one, we're going to get an 8.2. All right, rock, paper, scissors. Let's get into it. All right, let's jump into it. Songwriting. So this one is a little bit more dark. It's a little bit more serious. The transitions on here I don't think are that good, especially between the chorus, verse, and bridge. They're all too similar, and the way the beat changes is, is abrupt. I, I'm not really a fan of the way they did that uh, because it, it almost causes this confusion where it's like, wait, where am I at? Is this the chorus? Is this the verse? Like on the first listen, obviously after you hear it, a few times, you know where the chorus is, verse is, but on the first listen, it's like, what is this, bridge, chorus, verse, and 
because of that, I just think it's kind of poorly arranged. Um, it's definitely not as smooth as some of the other songs on the album, that's for sure. And the outro also is pretty abrupt. So the songwriting, I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. Now, the lyrics on here don't offer complexity like she does have a lot with her bars, but it does offer a little bit more depth and vulnerability. So this is, I think, the first time on the album where she's starting to talk about something that's a little bit more serious. She's opening up, getting vulnerable. And the way that she plays with the words for rock, paper, scissors, and the theme of how that works in the chorus is nice. But overall in the song, I think the lyrics are a little bit more basic, especially in comparison to what we've already gotten. Now, I think there's definitely more impact on the song because of what she's talking about. But the way that she talks about it and the delivery on here is a little bit is a little bit more subpar for what I've gotten so far. I think the problem is here, honestly, she matched the beat too well because the beat is this dark, sinister kind of vibe. She matched that and it's like too much of the same thing and it's this minor scale and it's very dark. It's just too much, I think. And I think that's the catch-22 with this style of beat and how this production is, is because it almost forced her to be in that box with her delivery. So for the lyrics, I'm going to have to give it a 6 out of 10. Now, the production on here is actually pretty different. It has a little bit more of a Kanye West synth dark kind of vibe. You know, I mean, the, the synths in here are a little bit more sinister. The, the drums seem to be a little bit more natural in here. And the mix is slightly above average, but not as good as some of the other songs, but it is pretty solid. But one thing I did notice was her vocals tend to get a little bit louder at certain parts. Like the vocals, I think, are blended really well in the chorus, but then in the bridge, they become a little bit too loud. And I think that's more noticeable throughout the song where the beat empties out and gives her a little bit more space for those vocals. I think that the vocals kind of stayed where they were when they should have been dropped or blended in. And that kind of was a little bit of a sore thumb for me. But overall, it's still pretty solid. So I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Now, the originality and creativeness on here. I think this is definitely a little bit more outside the box for Cupcake, right? This is something that's a little bit serious. She's actually talking about something that's kind of important to her and opening up, which is a first on the album. I also could hear Kanye as a feature on the beat. Not maybe his lyrics, but his sound. I could hear him fitting on here, which is also outside the box for Cupcake because I haven't been able to hear that on any of her other songs. And she's also broken out of her shell a little bit with her sexually explicit lyrics and her shock value kind of MO and done something new. So for creativeness and originality, I'm going to give her an 8 out of 10 on this one. The replay value, however, on this one, I can't see being that high. And the catch 22 to that is because it is a darker song. It is a more serious song, but it's also slow and it has that dark energy to it. It does drag a bit because of that, but it's not bad. It's just a unique song and, uh, and really specific, right? It's got a unique style and a unique delivery for uh, uh, this idea that she has. And with that being said, for me, I, I don't want to... I don't want to play it back. I'm not finding myself wanting to play it back. And I can't see a lot of other people wanting to play this one back except for a smaller group, a smaller niche that maybe the impact of the song has and they kind of relate to it. But as far as the overall sound of it, I don't really see that replay value there. So for me, the replay value gets a 5 out of 10. We add all those up and for this song, we get a 6.2. Okay, track five, Dora. Dora, Hora the Explorer, dog. All right, so this one, this, the way, the songwriting, I love the way that the song starts out. The, I love the drums and the pauses and the way that that comes in and kind of sets the pace a bit. I think there's a good intro, a good transition from the intro into the chorus. I think the chorus into the first verse has a good transition. And overall, the drums in here, I think, stood out the most to me because there's a lot of drum fills and drum-oriented transitions. So the way that the song is structured in that way, I think, creates this good flow of, of energy because the way that the drums kind of dictate that. I do like the flow. I do like the structure. So for the songwriting, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Now, the lyrics on here were a little bit more simple. She does have some bars, but they are kind of like some cheesy one-liners. Like, straight out of it, bitch, with your clown ass. Like, obviously, it, clown. Like, that's kind of some cheesy one-liner bars. Homie's full of shit, but I ain't never try to plunge it. Shit, plunge. Like, these are just a little bit more on the cheesy side, you know? So compared to what I know she's capable of, especially starting with the album, right? These are definitely dumped down a little bit, a little on the cheesier side. And then also the subject matter. Obviously, we've been here, done that. Like, it's a little bit repetitive with what she's talking about. But I will say I do like the flip on the chorus and how she did that. The whole door of the Explorer, horror of the Explorer, swipe or no swiping. You know, she's talking about how if this dude's not going to pay for anything, he's not going to swipe the car. We don't want him and no one likes swiper in the show. So I do like the way she played with the chorus and I think that was the most creative part of it as far as the lyrics go and that had more complexity to it, but the rest of it wasn't as solid as she usually brings. So for the lyrics, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Now the production here, the production here is different. It's got a little bit of this, it's got a little bit of this Indian, Middle Eastern flute kind of sound and the drums on here are very aggressive. I do like the drums a lot. There's a lot of percussive, there's a lot of percussive elements in here as well. Honestly, might be one of the most drum heavy 
drum oriented songs on the whole album. I think the mix on here is really solid as well, especially her especially her vocals. Uh, just across the board, she sounds really good on the verses and the choruses. Her vocals are blended really well, and I like the layers of the chorus. The vocal layers on the chorus and the way that the ad libs are blended in are really solid as well. So the production on here is going to get an eight out of ten. Now the creative aspect on here isn't really in the lyrics in terms of her verses. I think it's more on the chorus. I think the chorus stood out to me more with her creativeness and originality more so than the lyrics because the verses are definitely more basic by cupcake standards. If we're using cupcake standards here and what we know she can do, I think the verses lacked for sure compared to what she normally does. And also she's talking about a lot of the same stuff, right? The and even though the chorus is kind of talking about that too, Dora, Hora, the Explorer, you know, she's out here exploring the flip on it and the theme and the concept of it. I think I'll give her points for that, for the creativeness, but she's still not really outside her box on this one. She's still within her box. So for the creativeness and originality, I'm going to give it a six out of 10. The replay value though, I think with the replay value, I think the vibe and the energy of the song are definitely higher even though the lyrics are really vulgar and explicit, as per usual for Cupcake, I do think the song has a catchy sound to it. And it's got good tempo, good pacing, good flow, some catchy melodies, and nice drum patterns. So overall, even though I'm probably not going to be coming back to the song, I will give the replay value an 8 out of 10. So when we put all those together, this song is going to get a solid even 7. Queef. Can't believe I'm reviewing a song called Queef, right? But it is Cupcake. So the songwriting, I think it has a nice intro and a good transition into the chorus. But for the rest of the song, I think it does get a little repetitive, especially with the flow and just kind of the pace of the song. A big factor in that is because of the Jersey Club style beat and the drums and the pace of the song. That does get repetitive in all those styles. I mean, with like with Ice Spice and stuff like that, like that Jersey Club can get repetitive very quick. So it's a pretty simple arrangement overall. It's not bad, but it is a little bit more simple on the arrangement. So I'm gonna give it a six out of 10. Now, although this song is absolutely ridiculous, uh, I have to give her points and acknowledge her, her flow and her vocal performance, her delivery definitely changed up throughout the song. So I think that should be noted. I think good examples of that are the intro vocals, the way the intro vocals are and the beginning of the chorus. Those are, those are big switch ups and they match the beat very well. I think she had good flow on the verses. She definitely matched the beat. Um, and even though the lyrics are out of pocket, there are a few bars in here. Like one of them was the Gemini, but it's an Aries breeze. So obviously she flipped Aries breeze, the Aries horoscope with Gemini, but also air breeze. Okay, so there's a little bit of a double there. And the three little pigs blow his wood down. Obviously explicit, we know what she's talking about, but I mean, that's what happened. Blowing his wood, blow wood. We all know, okay? It's a little bit of a bar. Unfortunately, that's a bar, right? Um, but but a lot of the other lyrics felt a little cheesy and kind of like one-liner filler lines, to me at least. Uh, but then the ad-libs on this song also were absolutely ridiculous. Listen to this song again and just listen to the ad-libs. You're welcome. Or, I'm sorry, however you want to take that. But the lyrics on here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, give it a 6 out of 10. The beat on here is catchy. I do like the Jersey Club style. I like the bedroom pop kind of combination that it has with the production. Uh, I do wish the drums were a little bit harder, a little bit more thick, and a little bit more punchy. But it's not that bad. I can get over it because the rest of it kind of vibes pretty well. And the vocals on her verse get a little bit overpowering in parts, just a little bit. But overall, it's a pretty solid mix. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Originality and creativeness. Again, the concept of the song is creative. Creative for sure, okay? Definitely haven't heard anything like this. It's not really out of her element. It's not outside of her box. It's kind of within the cupcake world of what she does. It's it's really on par with her persona and what she's about. But I will give her points for being experimental with the beat. That seemed like it was a little bit outside of her element with this beat style. And I think she, she matched it really well. But it's just another sexually explicit song by Cupcake, right? So for the creativeness and originality, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. The replay value on here, this was actually a tough one to grade because on one hand, you have this catchy, good tempo, good vibe, good energy beat. But then on the other hand, you have these lyrics that are completely out of pocket. So there's a little bit of a contrast there. And it almost seems like a comedy song in that sense when you take the lyrics and put it on this beat. Now, I think the core fans and people that don't really mind comedic style kind of songs would vibe to this one and enjoy it. But if you're not in that group of people, then you're probably never going to play this song again. So for me, because it does kind of seem like a love or a hate song, it was kind of really hard to grade. So I think a, a fair grade would be right down the middle and just a five out of 10. It's not great. It's not above average. It's not below. It's just right down the middle. So if we take our numbers and add them all up here and do our math for this song, we get a six. That leads us to number seven, Aura, Aura, Aura. I think it's Aura. I don't know. Y'all, my brain is fried. It's been a long day. 
track number seven. The songwriting on here, I think this flows really well. I think it's got a very good energy and a very good tempo right out the gate. I think there's a really good balance between taking the percussive elements in and out of the song at, at certain parts. A good example of that is the hi-hats. If you listen to how the hi-hats sound at the intro, the pre-chorus, and the first part of the chorus, they're different and they, they, they're open, they're closed, they play at a different pace. Like the hi-hats is a really good example of that. And it's got a smooth flow and good transitions all the way through and has a good outro. So for the songwriting, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. The lyrics. Funny enough, this song is actually a little bit more about female empowerment and body positivity. Upon reviewing this and grading this and listening to this and dissecting it, this song is actually a little bit deeper. It's about female empowerment and body positivity, okay? She's managed to take this fun party sounding song and basically say, girl, it doesn't matter if you're fat, ugly, skinny, big titties, no titties, no ass, flat ass, money, no money. It doesn't matter. Guys like what they like and there's somebody for everybody. The most important thing is your aura, who you are, your personality. It's kind of funny because the song doesn't sound like that, but when you dig a little deeper, I mean, that's what it's really about. Um, This one doesn't really have any bars because I feel like the what she's talking about or she's trying to uplift people. So there's not really bars, except there is one bar in there where she says, in the mirror, the only time I'm shy because I got the baddest bitch in my sight. Right? That's a little bit of a bar because it's like, that's the only time I get shy because when you get nervous around pretty women, that's a thing. But she doesn't do that. But the only time she does is when she's looking in the mirror because it's herself. She's like, yo, I'm bad. Yo, chill. Kind of nervous. So I thought that was a bar. But other than that, there's not really any bars in here. But I think she makes up for it with really good flow and really good vocal performance for sure. Like the way that she softens her voice for the intro and the way that she adds like a feminine voice and a, a, a valley girl kind of accent for the pre-chorus. I thought that was fire. Uh, overall, there's just great flow and good delivery here. So for the lyrics, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. The production on here is absolutely amazing. It's probably my favorite song on the whole album. It's super, super catchy. It's got a great vibe, amazing energy and tempo. The mix on here as well is really good i think everything is balanced i think the vocals are at the right volume the only thing is when she starts one of the verses it is a little bit rough with the auto tune and it's a little bit louder than i think it should be but that's it other than that overall the whole song i think the production and the mix is really good i'm gonna give it an eight out of ten the originality and creativeness on here i think this one she really did go outside of her box this yeet style club style song that she has is really outside the box. I haven't heard Cupcake on a song like this before. It's definitely the first of its kind on the album, and it's got kind of like this club pumping life to it, but also the lyrics on top of it are more serious. Like, you're getting like this party song, but then when you listen to the lyrics, you're like, wait a second, I'm uplifted, you know? So there's like this empowerment to the song, and the way she disguised that in a party song, I thought was really creative and original. It, it, honestly, it's impressive how she did this. How she put these lyrics together on a song like this and made it work and made it so catchy is impressive. So for the creative aspect and the originality, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. The replay value. This one, even if she had Dr. Seuss writing on here and Dr. Seuss lyrics, the replayability would still be there. As long as she kept the flow and performance and delivery and the instrumental the way it is and everything else was the same, definitely a replayable song it's just so catchy then you add to the fact that the lyrics are actually really important and uplifting and serious it just makes it that much more of a bop so it's a very fun song very catchy very good energy and i bet you this is the one at the concert i bet you at the concert this lights the place on fire it's just got so much energy and so much vibe to it dude the tempo like it's just i can't wait to see concert footage of this one dude i, I just know it gets the place going so for the replay value i'm gonna give it a nine out of ten all right, let's get into track eight, DUI. So DUI, the songwriting on this one, it flows really well from start to finish for the most part. I do think that some of the transitions from the verse and the chorus could be a little bit better. I know that because of the pace of the song, it is a fast paced, kind of higher energy song. It does make it a little harder for that and leaves out less room. But because of that, the transitions aren't as smooth. But I do think there's a there's an effect in there. There's like a swelling sound, like a whoosh kind of like a DJ effect that does help a little bit with those transitions but as far as the arrangement of the song I think everything's pretty solid except for the part at the end it ends way too abrupt and it's honestly it's like in the middle of her verse so it's very kind of jarring and abrupt and don't see it coming at all there's nothing to kind of prep before it it just ends and because it's like in the middle of her verse she just is rapping and then she says like her last line then it's over for me that was just like completely out of place overall the songwriting is not bad the arrangement is okay. The abrupt ending don't like. Some of the transitions don't like. The swelling helps alleviate that a bit. But overall, 6 out of 10. The lyrics. Again, it's another sexual experience. She's drinking and driving, but she's not drinking alcohol, okay? It's very descriptive. It's explicit. And she doesn't shy away from getting the nasty lyrics. Now, the pin on here, I think her flow and her delivery outshined the actual pin on this one a little bit. The flow and the way that she says things and how she she adds certain things, 
certain layers at certain parts. I think that adds to the catchiness. And I originally thought about giving this, the lyrics a six, but there are a decent amount of bars in here, even though they are, you know, overtly sexual. There's still some bars. Unfortunately, that's a bar. That's kind of the thing with cupcakes. You know, she'll say something and it's like, that's completely out of pocket, but unfortunately it's a bar. So I think what really carries this song for me though is her performance. Her performance on here is really good. I think it shines a little bit brighter than the actual lyrics and her flow and delivery kind of really set that in. So for the lyrics, I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. Now the production on here, the beat is very different and the drums and just the overall sounds in this song, it almost has like a Brazilian funk kind of hybridization, Middle Eastern thing going on. I don't know, it's a very different beat. I, I can't really pinpoint exactly the influence of sound on this one. And that's a good thing that because of that, there's going to be points added to that because I, I can't really narrow it down. I haven't really heard something like this. So that's points in my book on production. And the mix on here is actually pretty solid considering how loud everything is and how, how much is going on. There's a lot going on on this song. The mix still manages to have a relatively balanced mix overall, especially with the way that the drums and the percussion are. The drums and the percussion on here are pretty loud and and forefront for center and i think they did a good job matching her vocals with that so the, the vocals are pretty balanced and there's good placement of the ad-libs as well she has another this is another one of those songs that has some pretty solid ad-libs so overall production i'm gonna give it an eight out of ten originality and creativeness again we're not really stepping outside the box with this one it's really you know out of pocket lyrics really sexual you got the dui flip on the theme with drinking but not really drinking. And it's kind of some of the it's similar stuff that I've already got previously on this album. It's just in a different light. Like, you know, instead of her having this crazy threesome or this, this, you know, golden shower experience or some of the other sexual things she's already talked about, she's just being a passenger princess and getting a little naughty in the passenger seat, right? But again, it's just another sexual experience and it's not really outside of her box. Now the DUI play theme that she does with that, I will give her a little bit of creative points for that. That's similar to what she did with Door the Explorer and that flip in the chorus. But the beat and the style of the beat, I think are a little bit outside of her element, not too far, but they are pretty, they are definitely a little bit outside. So with all that in consideration, I think overall for the creative factor, I think I give it a six out of 10. So the replay value on this one, again, the lyrics are out of pocket, crazy lyrics, but that is kind of Cupcake's MO. So if you are a core fan, I think that's not really gonna be an issue for you. And if you're not a core fan of Cupcake, if you're new to Cupcake and you're shocked with that, I think at the very least, like the pace, the energy, and the vibe of the song is a higher energy. And that alone is got this kind of hype vibe. So even if you're not really into the lyrics, the 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 energy and the beat, the instrumental is gonna wanna kind of get you hype and, and wanna make you move. Cause even myself, as I was reviewing this, I found myself kind of moving and bobbing to it just because the overall sound of it has that energy right it makes you kind of want to move even though you know I'm, I'm ignoring the lyrics but uh her vocal performance adds to that as well the way that she's rapping on here in combination with the beat definitely creates this vibe for kind of movement you know so i think for the replay value i'm actually going to give it a 7 out of 10 so if we add everything up dui is going to get a 6.8 double homicide the songwriting on here both parts of the song are good on their own each beat and the way that she raps is good on its own but as far as arrangement goes, I think that beat switch could have been done a lot better. I've heard plenty of other songs with beat switches, and most of the time they do it pretty well. You know, sometimes a beat switch doesn't work. In this case, I don't think it works that well. It, it doesn't, it's not an awful beat switch, but I really am just not a fan of how it kind of came out of nowhere. I think the only indication of something happening was that whistle that's played in the background. But even then, the way that a whistle is played usually is kind of signal for signal for hype. And it, although the beat and the energy are hype, the transition, like using the whistle as a transition piece, I don't think worked that well. So the beat change definitely is a little bit random for me. And also it's pretty soon. It comes in just 40 seconds after her rapping. So she's you, 40 seconds after the song starts, you're just starting to get a feel for it. You're just starting to get of like what she's saying. Everything's kind of coming together. You're getting the experience and then it's kind of taken from you and, and it goes into another beat. And I understand the concept of the song, Double Homicide. It's two beats. She kills both of the beats. I like that. I enjoy the concept of it. But as far as the arrangement goes, I think it was way too choppy. And in her defense, beat switches are hard to do. They're not the easiest thing to get done right in a song without having the listener 
without it being jarring. So for the listener to have a smooth transition into two different beats is not that easy. So for the, the songwriting and the arrangement, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Now the lyrics. Oh, the lyrics. The flow and the bars on this one. She was definitely in her bag on this one. She had a lot of great lyrics, a lot of good flow on here. And, and the delivery. I think she matched both beats very well. That is something she did really well as far as the beat change. I think her vocal performance and matching the beats definitely was higher ranked in my opinion. And some of the bars that she said that were notable for me were treat every homie like a sloppy joe and cold words bitch we only finna meat for bread love the sloppy joe meat for bread she's not really treating this guy she's treating him like just some regular average joe sloppy joe and then we're only gonna meet if it's for bread meat sloppy joe bread love the whole tie-in on there with the entendres and the play on words i thought that was really smooth i thought that was a hard bar and the way she set it up and executed it was really nice as well. Another one was, I ain't talking no BBL, but the body gonna be bruised if you see a bitch post ops. So that one is a really hard bar because obviously when you get a BBL, you know, it's a surgery. Body's going to be bruised up a little bit. You might have some, some bruising, some marks, whatever. And it's also post-operation. That happens when it's after the operation, post-op. So she's saying that if I see you post-ops, like you post up with your ops, I'm going to beat you up. I'm going to handle business and you're going to be bruised. And I'm not talking BBO and the post-ops. I thought this one was a little bit more complex than the other one and had a little bit more depth to it. It was a smooth bar. Again, the way she said it, how, how she set it up, it was very smooth. I like the execution of it and it's a nice bar. Another one was call me Christian Rock in the bank. Pop them blue faces in your face. This shit is nonstop. That bar is hard because there was a time... Earlier this year, I think, when Christian Rock and Blueface were everywhere, you just couldn't escape them. They just kept popping up. There was news about them every other day. But also, Christian Rock, Blueface's, Blueface the Rapper, Hundreds, Blueface's. I'm in the bank and I popped them blue faces in your face. So it's like, they also had some alleged domestic issues going on. So pop in in the blue face, but how many blue faces I got in your face? There was a, that one. I think was a, again a little bit more complex than the last couple lines that I mentioned, but that was a solid bar as well. Again, the way she said it, the execution of it, very nice. And then the last one was two pockets on me look like they twinning with Biggie. Obviously, two pockets. The way she said two pockets, two pock. Okay, twinning with Biggie. So Biggie, two pock. But then also both pockets are so fat like Biggie. They're twinning. They're just fat pockets, lots of money. So that one was a little bit more simple, but I like the way she said she brought Tupac in there by saying two pockets. I think on this one, she went off a little bit more and I'm going to give the lyrics a nine out of 10. Now the originality and creativeness on this one, I think I'll give her some points definitely for experimenting with a new sound and type of beat for sure. Definitely with the beat switching and all that, but it still is just kind of like a run of the mill flexing, shitting on your ops and haters type song. So that's not really outside the box, but she does do it very well and she does have a lot of bars and a lot of these bars are original and the way that she says the bars are kind of her style. So I think that kind of makes up for it with the not getting too far outside the box. So the idea of the song, the way the beat is kind of inside the box. A lot of the lines are leaning a little bit towards more outside the box, not all the way, but I think overall it's kind of balanced. And so for that, for originality and creativeness, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. The replay value, even though this one has that beat switch I don't really care for, and the overall sound I'm not really into, I definitely can hear the replay value because of the energy and the vibe. It does have bounce. The way that she flows on it carries a lot of that energy as well. And I think a lot of people uh, would play this back and get their, I mean, it, it could get their body moving at least, right? Like it definitely has some movement to it. And even more so, I bet at a concert, this one's going to be one of the ones that gets people moving a little bit because of the type of vibe that it is. So even though this one's not really, I'm probably not going to be playing it back, I still could see the appeal of it and the replay value, and I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. So if we add all those numbers up, Double Homicide is going to get a 7.2. All right, we made it to track 10, Little Red Riding Good, arguably one of the craziest songs to release this year, okay? The songwriting, the songwriting is actually well-written from start to finish. It really is. There's good transitions. The beat develops and grows and empties at certain parts when it needs to, kind of to kind of help tell a, a better story, I think, to give Cupcake a little bit more room, like just depending on what's happening in the song. Uh, little things like it drops before the chorus, it gets a little empty, and then when the chorus drops, it fills back up. So there is a lot of movement and dynamics with the song and the way that it's arranged. And and, and from start to finish, there's a nice flow, nice flow to it. And the way that it ends, I think it ends with a nice outro. It gives the listener time to process what just happened, a period to process your thoughts, if you will, right? So it had good flow, and then it had a period 
to process your thoughts. See, look, yo, Cupcake, put me on a song. You know what I'm saying? So, so the actual songwriting and the arrangement on here is actually pretty solid. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. The lyrics on here, look, as much as I hate to admit it because of how raunchy and out of pocket this song is, the lyrics are pretty solid. She has a lot of bars. She has a lot of play on words. And she plays with the theme of Red Riding Hood and the way that she wants to flip that to her narrative and what she's talking about in a very good way. She really does. It's disgusting, but it is good writing. Lots of pattern rapping and entendres that pertain to the main concept of the song in here. So as out of pocket as it is, it is solid writing. Some notable bars in here are, this pussy don't gang bang, but it turns that crip into a blood. Gross, but a bar, okay? And it also ties in the theme of the red writing good and what she's talking about. Another notable bar is pussy so mean, fuck around, hold a grudge, poo shysty, make up sex because I know the homies finna get it back in blood, something like that. And I like a few things about this. One, it's a double entendre. She's talking about the pussy so mean it's going to hold a grudge and get it back in blood. Like it's so good that she's going to get her get back, but in a good way of like make up sex and get that back in blood. But also, <clears throat> actually it's a triple because she's playing with how good the pussy is and how mean it is in a good way. Like, it's so mean, it's going to hold a grudge. It's going to come back, get that makeup sex. But also, it plays into the Pooh Shiesty, his song, Back in Blood. But then it also plays into her period, disgusting period sex theme that she's got going on of Back in Blood and the period blood and all this stuff. So, there's a lot going on with this one. I think this one is definitely one of the more complex lines on the song. As gross as it is, it's still a bar. And I like the way that she didn't actually say back in blood. She just said back in and then your brain kind of fills it. Your brain fills in the blank. And even if you don't know that song, it still fills in the blank because that's a popular saying. I'm going to get it back in blood, you know, like. So I think that was also a good way to write that and set up that bar. So this one, that's probably one of my favorite lines in the whole song. As gross as it is, I think it's still solid and good writing and a good display of penmanship. It is. Then another gross one is reincarnate my throat to the wolf. I could swallow kids, but grandma can't look. So that ties into obviously the theme of the Red Riding Hood, the wolf eating the kids, but then also Cupcake eating this guy's kids, swallowing. Come on, we know what she's talking about. Double entendre, gross, but a bar. So overall... As gross as this song is, it's got really good writing. There's a lot of bars in here. Some of the bars are a little cheesy. Some of the bars are pretty solid. Overall, I'm going to give the lyrics a 7 out of 10. The production on here, again, we get some Middle Eastern flute, drum stuff going on. Kind of a different beat. But the mix on here is very good. The mix, the way that the vocals sit on here is almost perfect. I mean, the mix on here is very, very solid. And the ad-libs on here take the experience to a new height. I think the ad-libs on here definitely not only like reinforce the concept that she's trying to get across and this idea that she has of this period sex, but they add so much to the fantasy of this song she's created. And obviously the, the ad-libs are extremely out of pocket as well. But that ties into Cupcake and her theme and what she's got, but also the song. And the way that the, the ad-libs are mixed in there, some are more apparent than others to kind of drive something in. And some of the ad-libs are blended in in the back a little bit, and you got to notice them and pay attention. So I really like the way that they mixed everything on this one. Production is going to get 8 out of 10. The originality and creativeness. Now, this one was a little harder to grade because, again, the song is this sexual experience that she has. And it's like, we've got a lot of this on the album. So it's not really that creative. It's not really outside of her box, but the concept of the red riding hood and what she did to flip that, I think is more creative than some of the other flips she's done because it's not just the chorus. It's the whole song, like the whole verse. She has so much patterns and themes and entendres that tie into the overall concept. And I think she keeps doing a lot of callbacks to the concept and the idea of the song. So I think that is the creative part Obviously, extremely original. Um, and even though it is on brand for her, I think there is some creative aspects to this. As gross as it is, it is creative, and you got to give credit where credit is due. And overall, it's kind of a 50 50 inside and outside the box, but the instrumental is a little outside her box. So I think I can give it a little bit more points. So overall, for the creative aspect, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Now, the replay value on this one, this one was hard to grade because it's definitely probably the grossest, most out of pocket song. On the album, it's very descriptive, it's very gross, she paints a very vivid picture. But for her fan base, I think that's not something that is too crazy. I think her fans get it, I think it's kind of on par and her fans kind of know what to expect. But the energy and the pace of the song are pretty hard, so there is a little bit of value there. Um, and and the, the repetition on the chorus is one thing, kind of lacks the value, but like something at like a concert, I know the chorus is probably going to go crazy, and it's just got that energy, the repetition, it'll probably get the crowd jumping. So there's a little value there. This one, I think, is a little bit more towards the love or hate 
in the middle, but I think there are some aspects that would raise it a little bit. So definitely a harder one to grade, but for the replay value, I think it's a, a six out of 10. We take all these numbers together and do our little formula. Little Red Riding Good is gonna get a 7.2. Okay, track 11, Cody. The songwriting for the most part flows decently well, but the first part of verse one after the chorus almost sounds like a bridge, so it gets a little convoluted here. Uh, a lot of that is because of the beat change and the performance that goes along with the beat change, so there's a little bit of confusion there and kind of takes away from that, that flow that it started off with. And the beat also, at certain parts, it just feels a little too empty and a little too basic, so that kind of reduces it a little bit. But the sound selection is pretty solid, and the overall vibe is this reggae, Caribbean, dance hall kind of song. So the sounds that they chose to use and where they chose to use them, I think, was a little bit more solid. But some of the, some of the flow between the verses and the choruses just felt a little confusing, like they wanted to be a bridge. And a lot of it is the way the beat changes and how she approaches it. Not the best arrangement, I think. So for the songwriting, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. The lyrics on here... I think the storytelling on here is pretty solid. She's definitely touching on a more sensitive and vulnerable subject. I think it's definitely easy to follow and understand a lot of what she's talking about here. And even her touching on kind of a, a soft topic, she still manages to sprinkle a little bit of bars in here. One of them being on dating sites, but he never treated me tender. That's a little bit of a bar, right? Basically saying he's still on dating sites. He's probably cheating, you know, and he never treated me tender. Tender being a dating app and then tender also being like tender love and care. And she didn't get that. So a little bit of a bar there on a vulnerable song. And then my personal favorite of this one was, we grew apart and your leaves has fallen, but the difference is I rose away. So the grew apart, growing, flowers, rose away, leaves falling, fall, and she rose away. She got, you know, she went better, bettered herself, but also rose. It's not that complex. But it is smooth to and how it pertains to the story. I like that bar. It was pretty solid for me. But overall, the lyrics, I think this one's definitely a little bit of a weaker track in that regard, especially when you compare it to some of the other ones. So for the lyrics, I'll give it a 6 out of 10. Production. So I think the beat is fairly solid. I like some of the sounds that they chose to use. Um, the arrangements kind of whatever. I do like the vibe and the, the style of it, the Caribbean kind of dance style. But the mix here is throwing me off a bit. I think her vocals don't sit that well in this song i think specifically on the verses her vocals are a little bit too loud and aggressive for the song they need to bring those down for sure because of like her aggressive rapping on it i think the vocals are just a little bit too loud in the mix and especially like on the verses they overpower it a little bit so i don't really like the relationship that they have with the mix and also with the vocal layers when they get more layers in there with her vocals i think that also adds to that overpowering kind of feeling of of loud like the volume and i don't think they mix that too well uh i do like her ad libs and i like the performance that she had on here i think she matched the beat fairly well in that regard the chorus i will say the chorus is definitely a little bit more balanced than the verses i think the chorus is mixed better i think because it has more fullness but a lot of the issues in here i think are with the mix and how unbalanced it can be at certain times and i think because of that it's giving a little bit more of an amateur vibe compared to the rest of the songs so for the production on this one it's gonna get a six out of ten i think that might be the lowest production grade I've, I've given so far on the album because the album's production for the most part is like at least all sevens I think some are eight nine ten uh, but this one just it missed the mark a little bit it has a little bit more of an amateur vibe the originality and creativeness I think she definitely stepped out of the box on this one it's a very different vibe I think she tried something new with the production and the style of the beat but also the subject matter and what the song's about so both of those definitely outside the box I think she really experimented here and tried something new and overall this sound this whole song is not something I would expect to hear from Cupcake at all. Like, if you just put it on and tell me it was her, it was the first time I heard it, I would be like, wait, that sounds like Cupcake, but this is not, like, what is this? Is she on a feature? Is she on another album? It would throw me off a bit, but in a good way, because I'm, I'm this is something I wouldn't expect from her. So, for the originality and creativeness, I'm actually going to give this one a 9 out of 10. The replay value on this one, I think the replay value on this one is going to be a little bit lower than some of the rest on the album. I think it's definitely going to be played a lot less and a lot of that, for me, has to do with the vocal disconnect of the song. Some of her vocal tones are a little bit too harsh, and also the relationship of her vocals and the instrumental don't fit at certain parts. And I think a lot of that is a little off-putting. There's definitely better songs on the album as far as the mix, for sure, and how it, how it sounds overall. So for the replay value on this one, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. When we add all our numbers up, Cody is going to get a 6.6. .6. Track 12, Nun Nun. So the songwriting on here, actually, I like the flow on this one. It has a good sense of direction, 
and the transitions are solid as well. The way the verse goes into the chorus and that bass line comes in, such a smooth transition and it's so nasty. That bass line is really, it's so aggressive and, and tight and punchy. That bass line is so nasty. I love when that comes in on the chorus and it's a really good transition, uh, especially with the tempo of the song and the way the drums come in. It creates this nice head bop. I can hear it in my head right now. That no, 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 no. The way that it comes in is so nice. Really like that. I think that was well done for the arrangement. The melody changes changes and the sound changes along between the verses and chorus I think is also a really good decision because it adds a lot of dynamics to the song. This song definitely has more dynamics and it has a, a better flow than some of the other ones because of those transitions from verse to chorus and how the song has a lot of these changes. I think it's really well done. So the songwriting, I'm going to give it 8 out of 10. The lyrics on here, she has good flow, she has good delivery, and she has some solid bars. I do take a little bit of points away because some of the lyrics are repetitive and I feel like she was just saying that to make things work. Like when she was saying, in my left, left titty, you know, she's saying left twice. She's saying licky, 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 saying that a bunch of times, saying, let me speak to the manager like right, right now. And I think that was said to make it, you know, pipe down, fit better. So a lot of those lyrics of the, the repetition of the same word, didn't really care for that. I felt like it was, it was there to try and make something else work afterwards, but some of the bars kind of balance that out. I like the got no filter when I snap like giddy. I think this one's a triple because she has no filter when she snaps. So when she gets mad, she got no filter. Is she going to say what she's going to say? But also filter and snap, Snapchat the app, filters, snap, also snap a pic, which ties into Getty. Getty is like Getty Images is a site where photographers, videographers, I think you also can post video on there, but you can like post freelance pictures and stuff. People can lease them out com for commercial use and stuff like that. So that's a triple with the Getty Images the snap, the filter, it all ties in. But she's saying like, yo, I ain't got no filter when I snap like Giddy. So I like that. That was a solid bar. And then also when she's talking about her net worth and she's saying couldn't reach this net even if a hoe dunk. So she's saying even if a hoe dunk physically can dunk, you still couldn't touch the net. Because if you can dunk, you can definitely touch the net. But saying even if you could do that, you still can't touch my net because my net worth is so high. Nice flex bar. Not that complex, but it's a nice flex bar. And the way she says it and delivers it has a nice punch. I like that bar as well. But I think my favorite bar in here is she's acting like the feds to her ex, but she's really FedEx because she gave him the box and he never looked back. She's saying that basically this dude's ex is crazy and is like stalking him because she's acting like the feds, but she's really more like FedEx because she just gave him the box, aka just gave him some sex, and then he never looked back. Because when you when you FedEx, you drop off a package, you're gone, right? No one looks at each other. It's like, here's your package. I'm gone. The dude's like, thanks for the box. I'm out. So I like this bar because it's more of a disrespectful bar to whoever she's talking about. But it's a nice play with the feds, the FedEx, the box. I like the doubles in here. I thought it was smooth and it was pretty solid. So even though she does have some repetition in here that I don't really care for, I think she kind of balances out with some of the bars that I do enjoy. So for the lyrics, I'll go ahead and give a 7 out of 10. Production on here, the mix I thought was pretty solid. The way that the vocals and the instrumental blend are, are at a nice balance. One thing I do notice was the ad-libs in here. I like the ad-libs, especially when she's talking about like shooting or brings up guns at any time. The ad-libs in there are like, doo -doo, doo -doo. you know, she's adding these gun sound kind of effects with her mouth. I think those ad-libs are cool and they're blended at the right volume because you might not catch them on the first listen but if you pay attention you can for sure hear them and they do add a little bit to the experience so i like the ad libs on here the way they're mixed and in the chorus i like the back vocals her vocals that are in the back on the chorus i like that as well that adds a nice kind of layer and atmosphere to the chorus i think that kind of helps make it a little bit more full and the drums and the bass are very punchy and very tight throughout this whole song i do enjoy the way that the drums are mixed uh, but my favorite part for sure is going to be the the drums on the chorus that bass line is just Love that bass line. So the production on this one is very solid overall. Don't really have anything to nitpick about it. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. The originality and creativeness on here, although it does sound pretty good, it's not really too far outside the box. It is, again, more of like a flex, braggadocious kind of song, which is fine. And especially since she mainly focuses on like overtly sexual explicit lyrics, this is kind of a little bit of a change, but nothing crazy. But it is a little bit more on the trap side, which she hasn't done too much on, on this album. So I will give her some points for the style of the beat for sure. And the overall sound of what she's created with this song, I think is a little bit outside of her box and slightly off brand, but it's nothing crazy. Nothing like, oh my God, this is so creative and original. I've never heard this before. But for her and what she does, I think it is a little outside of what she normally does. So for that, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. The replay value on here. I actually think the replay value on here is pretty high. And the reason is because I think the the overall sound does have a little bit more of a mainstream kind of sound and i think could 
appeal to a bigger audience than just her usual demographic. It has a wider reach because of the sound that it is. I mean, who doesn't love that that hard trap beat energy with crazy bass, right? Like everybody loves bass. So I think because of that, it is going to have a little bit more plays than some of the other ones maybe. And like if you enjoy any sort of like trap music at all, I think you enjoy this one as well. So I think this one definitely has a little bit more replay value in that sense. And I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. So if we add all the numbers up for none, none, I'm going to give it a 7.6. 13, yawn. <sighs> yawn. So the songwriting on this one. The instrumental here is actually a little bit more on the repetitive side, and it doesn't have a whole lot of variance to it. It's pretty simple and just kind of stays the same. It does have some faster energy to it and some faster tempo, but it kind of just alternates between two different sounds and goes back and forth, and there's nothing really special about it that doesn't have any smooth transitions. There's kind of nothing really to it. It is definitely one of the more basic, if not the most basic song on the album as far as the way that it's arranged and how the song flows. The songwriting on here, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. The lyrics on here, the lyrics, I definitely was a little bit disappointed because there's more pre-chorus and chorus than there is verses on here. The song definitely is more repetitive and it feels a little bit lazy as a whole and kind of at certain parts. It doesn't feel like the same effort I've gotten on a lot of the other songs. Uh, some of the flow here also isn't as smooth and feels a little rushed. Uh, an example is the last part of her verse. She says, you know, something 666, three hoes on demon time. It's not no atheist. That didn't really fit smooth. And the way she said, not no atheist, it was kind of, it felt rushed. And the atheist doesn't really work with 666, atheist. It doesn't, it's not smooth, right? And I would expect a lot better from Cupcake for sure. Like we've seen her pen. We know it goes crazy. So for this, it was like, what am I getting here? And also because the verse was shorter, like I said, I got a lot more chorus and a lot more pre-chorus than actual verse. I think at least you should have had stronger bars and more impact in the verse if it was going to be shorter, but I didn't get that. I didn't get that here. And honestly, I think this is definitely one of the weaker verses, if not the weakest verse on the album. So for the lyrics, I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. The production the production is pretty solid on this one. Even though I don't really care for the arrangement of the beat, the mix is pretty solid with the balancing of the vocals and the instrumental and the blending of it. I think everything in here is pretty clear and balanced. The vocals are in a good spot. The ad-libs are in a good spot. I like the panning of the ad-libs, especially when she's yawning and stuff and it goes from left to right, left to right. She's adding a little bit of dynamics there. So the production isn't necessarily a problem on this song. I think the mix and everything's actually pretty balanced. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Now, the original and creativeness. This song is yet again nothing new. It's just more overtly sexual lyrics. It's Nothing that I haven't heard before, right on brand for Cupcake, really did it. I think she really played it safe with this one. Uh, and even the concept of what the song's about, I think lacked depth and creativeness compared to a lot of the other songs. DUI, Water Balloon, Little Red Riding Good, Dora. I mean, when you compare those songs to this and that, that shock value, sexual, explicit kind of stuff, this one definitely falls short. I think she just really played it safe with this one. Maybe it was just, you know, it was really simple. I don't think there's a whole lot with this one going on. And I think almost it should have been on an EP, honestly, or like a single by itself and not on the project. It really doesn't feel like the same quality and effort as a lot of the other songs. The originality and creativeness, I'm going to have to give it a 5 out of 10. The replay value, short, repetitive. Nothing's really happening in here. No crazy bars, no crazy flow. Also, the flow and the delivery combination didn't really create anything special or memorable. And overall, I just, I just felt like this one definitely fell short compared to the rest of the songs on the album. The only thing on here that I did find kind of catchy and almost head bob worthy was when she's saying, open up my mouth, open up my mouth. That is kind of catchy and has a little something to it, but that's it. Other than that, nothing really grabbed me in this song. And it, it honestly felt a little rushed and kind of messy. So the replay value on this one, I'm going to give a 5 out of 10. When we add all those numbers up, Yawn is going to be a 5.6. 14, Dementia. The songwriting on this one. I think the song on here flows very well. I think it carries the listener from start to finish. Pretty clear. A nice direction. And there's not really any confusion going on. I think the, the drums are a big component of that and how it carries the listener on this one. Because it does change drum patterns from kind of this regular drum pattern to a four to the floor Jersey club style beat. And I think that really kind of dictates 
the movement of the song pretty well. I also like the transitions between the verse to the chorus to the post chorus. I think those are smooth transitions. That also has good flow to it. And I can clearly tell what part of the song I'm listening to when it's playing. So for the songwriting, I'm going to give it 8 out of 10. The lyrics. The lyrics on this one, in addition to the writing and the concept and the theme that she's playing on, she has some diversity here for sure, especially with the delivery. She goes back and forth between this phone singing type effect to more clear singing and a softer voice to kind of melodic rap. So she definitely has a lot of delivery changes on here that add a lot of character to the, the instrumental and the beat itself. In addition to that, she also has some solid bars, overall solid delivery, and good storytelling on here. So for the lyrics, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. The production, I wish the production had a little bit more punchiness to the drums, especially on that Jersey Club type beat. I wish there was a little bit more oomph to it but other than that the mix is really solid i can hear everything very clearly everything feels pretty balanced to me i do enjoy a lot of her vocal layers on here at certain parts they add a lot to it and they kind of thicken everything up and, and add a fullness to it especially on the chorus and the post chorus i think that was really well done and also the ad libs on here are kind of sneaky the ad libs are a little bit more snuck in there, but when you notice them, they add a lot to it. And I think they are mixed very well because they're not like in your face, but when you do notice them, they do add to the to the song. And I think those were mixed in really well. So the production, I'm going to give it eight out of 10. The originality and creativeness, this one is definitely a little bit more outside of her box. She's talking about a little bit more of a relationship, love triangle kind of thing, a little bit more serious, right? She's talking about an experience of a relationship, love triangle and not the sexual stuff. So it's a little outside the box. And also the instrumental she's doing it on is this softer, melodic, bedroom pop, Jersey club type beat, which is not really a cupcake vibe. You know, that's not really an MO and standard thing of cupcake I would, I would imagine to hear. So the idea and the execution of it, I think are both pretty solid and also pretty creative. So for the, the creative aspect of here, I'm going to give this one an eight out of 10. Replay value on here, I think is a little bit higher. I think it definitely has a little bit more mainstream kind of appeal, especially, you know, as popular as Ice Spice is. She does a lot of Jersey Club stuff and other artists kind of have followed suit. So it is kind of a trendy sound and I think it does have a little bit more catchiness to it. The energy is pretty good and the way that she she puts her vocals on here. She does have a little bit more melodic vocals. I think that adds to it and heightens the replay value as well. So if I combine her vocals with the song type, the way that it's structured, how it's flowed, I think the replay value on here is pretty solid and I would rank a little bit higher than some of the other ones. I'm going to give the replay value on this one an 8 out of 10. So if we add all those numbers up for Dementia overall, this song gets an 8. Backstage passes, track 15, almost done. So, so the songwriting on here was actually kind of basic, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it, I just wish there was better transitions to kind of compensate for that that simplicity that it has um, like a lot of the song just kind of blends in together for example the chorus going into verse one isn't really apparent on that transition with the beat and i think her vocals have to compensate for that so for me things like that throughout the song kind of knock it down a bit when it when it is a little bit more on the simple side so for the songwriting i'm gonna give it a six out of ten the lyrics on here were a little bit more basic than some of the other songs and also a good amount of the lyrics were on the cheesy side she has some of these cheesy one-liners in here like asshole squinting on the dick am i fuck around and need some glasses really talking about the booty squinting and needing glasses kind of cheesy slight bar i guess but it's a very like surface level amateur bar squinting glasses you know and it is a little on the cheesy side another one is brain donation head is wicked heard that one a few times not exactly like that but it, you know brain and head everybody's talked about that and brain college scholars stuff like that brain donation head wicked a little bit cheesy you know but i will say the one thing in here that she did say that was a pretty solid bar and had layers to it i thought it was pretty hard was the multi-talented different genres on the cock pussy wrapped all around your dick Tell it make a bitch moan, R&B, right after it popped. That one was hard because she said the pussy multi-talented genres, obviously multi-genres, and then wrapped around your dick, wrapped. Tell it make a bitch moan, R&B, R&B, kind of doing a lot of moaning, a lot of this baby girl like singing until it popped. Pop, pop that pussy, pop the genre. I thought that was smooth. There was a lot, there was a lot going on there. Some, some you know, people might miss that on the first go. I thought that was a solid bar and, and obviously ties into the sexual thing that she's going for, but I thought it was pretty good writing. Overall, though, this song lacks a little bit of complexity compared to some of the other writing that she had for sure and what she usually brings to the table. So for the lyrics on this one, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. The production, even though I'm not really a fan of the production on this one, like the beat, it is solid. It is still a good mix. I think it is mixed pretty well and has some 
nice balance. Some of the vocals are louder than they should be at certain parts, and, and I think they could be brought down a bit, but at least they are crisp and clear, you know? So the way that it was EQ'd and shaped and engineered, I think, was good. It's just kind of a, a volume relationship issue, but nothing nothing special here. And again, I think it's just kind of maintaining this pretty much the average standard of what we got on the, the album for production, which is fine. It's pretty solid production all the way through, some better than others, but overall, I think it's like the production is probably the strongest thing on the album. Uh, this one, I'm going to go ahead and give a 7 out of 10 on the production. The originality and creativeness, I like the backstage pass, plan words he does to illustrate the chance of this guy having the opportunity to have anal with Cupcake, essentially. And that's backstage pass, and it's a play on words. And I think the, the chorus is creative in that regard, but again, it's right up her alley, it's in her box, and it's not really trying anything new or... or experimenting with Cupcake on this one. I think the ad-libs on here are a little creative and they're probably the most creative part of the song. Honestly, the ad-libs that she's doing, I mean, let's be real, the ad-libs are really, but as far as the song as a whole, it's, you know, it's kind of just, this is what I get with Cupcake. It's, I've heard it before, right? I've heard it a few times on the album now. So it's just another overtly sexual song, even though the chorus is kind of creative overall for the creative originality aspect i'm gonna give it a six out of ten the replay value for here i think is definitely for the core fans i think those are the fans that are gonna be playing this back as it is super sexual and explicit and raunchy but even then i think the energy of the song is definitely brought down it is kind of this weird contrast she has going on with the overtly the super sexual explicit lyrics and the shock value of the lyrics but also the vibe of the beat is kind of this chill waiting room elevator music almost type vibe i know it's not that slow but it, it it's in that realm you know a vibe and it, it's kind of this weird relationship she has with what she's writing on the sound of the beat if that makes sense so because that is kind of this weird vibe going but also the lyrics are very explicit and specific i think that creates a smaller niche of replayability and so i think the people that are going to play this back is a smaller group it's going to be a niche core fan group than a wider appeal but even then i think there's other songs on here that would get more play value as far as the way it sounds and the energy so for the replay value i'm gonna give a six out of ten now if we add all those up for backstage pass we get a 6.2 okay we made it to the last song track 16 cruella the song on this one i think this one flows pretty smooth i think it has a good intro flows start to finish very well i think the beat empties out at the right time to help accentuate and really help her lyrics have more impact at certain parts and that really helps get her point across better because of the type of song that it is but as far as the arrangement of the beat goes i think that is done very well and it is a simple beat for the most part but i think the arrangement of it and the combination of her vocals give it a pretty straightforward and smooth continuity so the songwriting i'm gonna give a seven out of ten the lyrics on here are definitely more serious than the rest of the album and the way that she flows and delivers the lyrics i think make the listener focus a little bit more right you can kind of tell like hey she's serious for a second she's saying things with her chest she's really trying to get really trying to get something off her chest and she's talking about something she wants to talk about and feels like is important and you can get that in her delivery. And I think that really makes the listener go, wait, hang on. Oh man, she's 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 talking here. She's cooking. You know, and I think a lot of that is her delivery. Also, the way she writes the chorus and how she writes it is smooth and creative because the way it ties into the theme and the concept, the idea of what she's talking about, and having black and white people come together, but she said it in a way to play off the Cruella. It's a good way to illustrate what she wants to do, but it's also creative and kind of a bar. So I like the way that she wrote that. And I think on this one, she definitely has more impact on what she's saying. And the bars have a little bit more weight to them than a lot of the other songs that I've gotten in the last like four or five songs because of you know the type of song that it is. This is definitely probably the most serious song on the album. I like a few of the bars. I like the the back and forth, like the hair on Willow. Obviously Willow, had, Willow Smith had that song back and forth. So I like the back and forth, like the hair on Willow. That was a smooth bar, but I think the hardest bar in here, my favorite bar, not 101 Dalmatians, but we only get spotted in dark places. That's a hard bar because of what she's talking about. She's touching on racism in here. Also to tie into the theme of black and white people coming together, Cruella, Cruella had Dalmatians. Dalmatians are also black and white. This is a pretty in-depth bar and to have her talk about black people is saying we're not like 101 Dalmatians, but we still get spotted in dark places. Spotted is a play on words for the spots on Dalmatians, but also when they they spotlight black people in a bad light, it's in dark places. And the dark ties into the black 
and white theme as well. So this bar has some layers to it. It's deep and impactful. And I think the hardest bar of this song for sure. And, you know, it's sad as well because she's right. You know, a lot of times black people do get spotted in dark places and that's what it, the media likes to highlight, right? So very, very good bar there. And then another one to kind of follow up with that was the, you know, she's talking about how she was in the store and she got followed like some predator, but she has more cash in her pocket than is in the register, meaning a lot of times people will stereotype other people based on the way they look. In this case, black people, a lot of black culture, hip hop culture, the way the fashion is gold chains a lot of people have a stigma associated to that so she's saying because the way that she's dressed and how she looks she's looking like a thug or she's up to no good and so she gets followed like she's this predator and it's like dude i'm not gonna rob you i've got money i've got more pocket change than you have in your register quit treating me like a predator right so i like that bar as well in here it, it's got some weight to it it's got some impact on it it's not necessarily that complex of a bar but it is more on the deep and impactful side so i think the writing in here was very solid and the lyrics i'm going to give it eight out of ten the production on here definitely has more of a serious vibe i think they did a good job capturing that serious motivational kind of impactful vibe with the sounds the horns this the Sound selection that they had in here and the tone that they created, I think was really good and allowed Cupcake to do what she did on here. I think there was a very good combination of tone and sounds with her vocals and what she wrote. The mix on here is very solid. Like most of the project, it's very balanced. And I do like the way that they blended her layers and they used actual vocal layers to help the actual transition of certain parts and, and the energy that that created. I think that was a good move too. So the production is going to get an 8 out of 10. The originality, the originality and creativeness on this one definitely, definitely is outside of her box. She's talk, talking on a really sensitive topic and this subject that she's talking about is always going to be hard to talk about. It's a very sensitive topic with a lot of history behind it. A lot of it's not good history and it's always going to be difficult to talk about this topic. And I think it's even harder to make a song out of it and do it well without coming across as like fake woke or trying like a try hard or not being taken seriously. Like it's very difficult to make a song out of this subject and do it well and i think she did a really good job in executing that she also branched out pretty far on this one and she matched the experimentation very well for as far as she went outside her box and experimented here i think she nailed it for what she was trying to do because sometimes when you experiment you miss the mark a bit but here i think she she really nailed it and this is a completely different side of cupcake right this is a more like real side of cupcake that i would like to honestly hear more of maybe not just this subject but more sides of cupcake like this that let me know what she really cares about other than than blowing dick and getting peed on I want, I want to know some serious sides of, cup, of Cupcake and what she's into and what she cares about and who she is and her morals and ideals and stuff like that, right? This is completely opposite of what I normally get from Cupcake. So for the originality and creativeness, I'm going to give this one a 9 out of 10. The replay value on here, also, it is a niche sound, and it's not because of necessarily the overall sound of it, but because of the tone and the energy, right? It has more of a serious, we need to sit down and talk about this kind of vibe, and that's not necessarily a wider appeal of people wanting to replay that back, right? It's not as fun as the rest of the album, okay? It's definitely more serious. This one's not a fun song. But I do think there are some catchy parts in here. I think some of the upbeat tempo kind of alleviates that and balances that balances it out a little bit but even with that being said like for me obviously the replay value is not really there but i can see how for a big group of people this is going to be more of an impactful kind of song and they're you know, a lot of these lyrics and what she's talking about is really going to resonate and hit home. So even though the sound of it might not be this fun, replayable song, I think the importance of it and what she's talking about and how it's going to resonate with people is going to have the replay value. So for the replay value, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Now, if we add all those up, we get an average of 7.8. So that does it for the whole album review. If we add up all the numbers and grades of each song and we average them out, we get a total of 7.15. So if you've seen my other reviews, you know I round up or down on the final review to just make it simple. So we're gonna give this album a solid seven out of 10, which is higher than I thought it would be, to be honest. And that's why I think you have to listen to every single song. And honestly, you know, in honor of Cupcake, I kinda wanna knock it down just a bit and do a 6.9 out of 10. 69 out of 10 i think you know that fits right up cupcakes alley but i don't want to i don't want to take it away so 7 out of 10 for real but for fun we'll do a 6.9 out of 10 uh that's actually higher than i thought i was gonna get this album and i'm glad that i i'm starting to do the five categories to break down everything because i think that's fair because there's some objective factors in there like the mix i think is a little bit more objective than something on on like the lyrics or 
the vibe of the song that's pretty subjective but the mix there definitely is more objectivity to audio engineering than subjectivity and that's still even kind of hard to balance because a lot of the mix is how the engineer likes to put things in the mix and the best way i could describe that is if you have 10 people cook up spaghetti you're going to get 10 different flavors because certain people like to cook their pasta longer. Certain people like to use a little bit different ingredients. And even if it's all the same recipe, if they're not following it one to one and they're just kind of freestyle cooking, you're going to get different tastes here and there. And even though you're eating spaghetti, there's going to be some different textures. There's going to be a little bit different flavors and consistency with the sauce. And that's the same thing with engineering. For the most part, you want a balanced mix. You want ad-libs to be a certain volume you want the vocals to sit at a certain place in relationship to the beat but there is some subjectivity there so seven out of ten is a solid album for me i'm not gonna be playing the album back there honestly might be a few songs on here that i would go back to one of them is definitely aura i think aura is a vibe for sure maybe even nun 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 goes kind of hard i know there are songs on this album that if they were played i probably wouldn't turn them off like if i'm riding in the car with somebody and they're a big cupcake fan they put some of these songs on I'm going to be vibing out to them, right? I'm, they're definitely not bad songs. They're not necessarily my taste, but they're also not to the point where I don't want to vibe to them. The only two songs I think that I would put on my own, maybe three, is Aura, for sure. Maybe None None and maybe Grillin' Homies, too. Everything on here is pretty solid. I think she tied in very well. She definitely has She definitely has a lot of her own personality on this album, and it's definitely authentic. This whole album is Cupcake. I do like that she branched out on a few songs. She, you know, Rock, Paper, Scissors, Cody, Cruella. She did step outside of her box and talked about some serious things. And I would like to see more of that from Cupcake. I think at the end of the day, she has a very, very good pen. I think obviously her raunchiness and sexually explicit lyrics and her shock value style definitely holds her back from a wider audience. But at the end of the day, like I've always said, if that's what she likes to do, that's what she wants, and that's where she finds her success and has fans that follow her and like that. That's all that matters at the end of the day. So solid album overall. I like the production on here. I think she definitely was original a lot of times, definitely got creative, has very good writing. I think the way that the the, the start to finish of the, the project is pretty smooth. I feel like each song kind of flows into each other. I think it's a really solid album. Even though it's not my taste, I'm not really going to be coming back to it, like I said, as a whole. There's a lot of other music, a lot of other artists projects that I would rather listen to. I think Cupcake is a very talented artist. I think she's a very unique artist and I would like to see, you know, I am kind of excited to see what else I can get from her in the future. You know, I wonder what else she's going to do and how crazy she's going to get. This was a fun ride. I enjoyed it. There was a whole lot of shock value in here, a whole lot of stuff I wasn't expecting to hear or never thought I would hear, especially the ad libs, craziest ad libs in the game, to be honest. But this was a lot of fun. I like doing this. I know this review took a while to get out, but these reviews do take time. As you can tell, they're in depth. Uh, I mean, I wrote 14 pages here on these 16 tracks, and it was like six. I mean, it's like 6,800 words that I wrote here. So, in my in my notes to kind of do this review. So they do take time, but I do enjoy them. And and you know, I like I like breaking stuff down. I like being analytical like that. Uh, It's fun for me. It's kind of like a puzzle. And also this carries into my music. You know, I I, I learn from these artists that I critique and review. So it's, it's nice. But this was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it was worth the wait. Keep recommendations coming. Keep the new artists coming. Keep just keep all that support and love coming that you guys you guys always show up with. I really appreciate that. If you like this video, please please like, share, subscribe, do everything you can to support this because these do take a lot of time. And I can't monetize these because there's no music involved. A lot of times I can't monetize on the channel because you know copyright. But if you guys enjoy these and you want more of that, do your best to support me. So so with all that being said, hope you guys are having a good day. Send a positive vibes your way. And until next time, I'm out.